Okay. I think that's it besides the hider. So I have something to say to the to the general public before the hider case. <laughs> so y'all know yesterday I said somebody tell uh, the guy to stop. Uh, the guy I said I asked somebody to tell the guy to stop um, recording my video. I mean replaying my videos. And then somebody told them, and then they replayed me saying don't record my video <laughs> and, and they put up a sign and, and somebody sent it to me this morning um, and then I went on there and I started responding to people's comments but somebody asked me and they said judge please don't do it because we learned so much from the thing and blah 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 so I'm going to Eisenhower. Uh, your Honor, this is the date and time set. We we appeared last week for a pretrial. Uh, the the facts are pretty simple. Uh, Mr. Eisenhower and Ms. Totten were in a domestic relationship. Uh, he is the only one on the lease. Uh, she is not on the lease. She's not. She doesn't have a sublease with Mr. Eisenhower. Uh, we've served her with a thirty day notice to quit. Um, and he's just asked that uh, she be removed from the property. I explained to her uh, last week when we appeared that uh, I certainly understand if she wishes to avoid having an eviction judgment on her record and made the offer to uh, consent to a conditional dismissal uh, so long as she was going to move out voluntarily at the end of that period. That offer is still open. Uh, but otherwise, I don't believe there are any defenses. We gave a proper notice to quit with 30 days. Uh, she does not have any right to remain in the property. We're just simply asking for a possession judgment. Ms. Cotton, what is your position? It's hard to believe that uh, I've been living with this man for 34 years, and now all of a sudden he decides that he doesn't want me with him anymore. Thir 34 years? Yes, and we have a 29-year-old daughter together, and she lives with us also. Your Honor, my understanding from my client is that uh, the, the daughter is not being asked to move out. He and she are aligned in this. Uh, according to my client, apparently Ms. Totten is a hoarder and has other issues that my client simply not uh, willing or able to tolerate any further. Uh, their relationship has broken down long since, and she's not entitled to remain in possession. Well, not in a second, though. So the, the problem is, where did they reside? Well, let me ask this, Ms. Totten. When you haven't read resided at this residence for 30 some odd years have you no no with his job we've moved around and now since he has to go to the va all the time uh, we moved out there we've been there like two years 
And I'm not allowed to bring anything in, not even food. So I have to keep my canned goods and stuff in the car. He's OCD and he's just getting worse. I, uh, I dog sit or house sit or people sit to get money. And uh, the last time I was gone and my daughter was at work, he decided to even clean out the freezer in the fridge. And he don't even use the one in the kitchen. He's got his own personal fridge in the bedroom because he likes to eat fast food and TV dinners where me and my daughter like to eat real food. And okay. uh, he won't so, go and get well, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My, the... The thing of my, the reason I asked the question, the prior place that you resided, or has there been any point at which both of you were on the lease? No, since we moved out of my house that I owned so that he could be in control of me, he's never put me or my daughter on any paperwork, on cars, on anything, even though. Okay, you know, hold on. So when did you move out of your house? Like 20 years ago. Okay, so you were in your house together. The next thing you know, you guys are living together for the next 20 years. But he's the leaseholder on these things. Yes, on everything. That's okay. Right. So, yeah. Ms. Totten, have you tried to talk to legal services at all? Yeah, they were shocked that somebody could do this, but we know because his son made sure that dad knew that. Um, okay, did they indicate that they were going? Okay, everybody can be shocked, but um, did they indicate that they'd be representing you, or what did they? Well, they want me to to do a, something different. They say he's allowed to do this. It's hard to believe. But even to get on waiting lists, it could be 60 days before I can even get into any kind of housing or shelter. It's not that easy to just show up on their doorstep and they have a place for me. You know, when I ask him why is he doing this, he says, I'm not doing it. The attorney is like, oh, but you hired the attorney. And he thinks he has till the 17th if you only give me 10 days to change his mind. Okay. Um, counsel, I don't have a copy of the lease agreement. No, oh, he tried to get the complex to. He said, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, okay. I was just going to say that he tried to get the complex to do this, and they said they have no Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, I'll be quiet. I have not addressed anything to you. Okay. Mr. Calvin, I do not have a copy of the lease. Your Honor, I, I did not attach a copy of the lease to the complaint because the, the lease did not affect uh, Ms. Totten. I can certainly get that for the court if it's needed. But I don't know if it does or not. I mean, I can tell by the address on the property that it is an apartment complex. I don't know what her status, I mean, I, I understand the representation here, but I don't understand, I don't know what her status vis-a-vis -vis that unit would be. And, and Your Honor, I, I understand that. She did just admit on the record that she's not on the lease. Well, have it in front of me. Um, she also has indicated that she's been with this person 34 years. So there's going to be something in this. Um, I need a lease um, that covers the premises. And I'll need that. When? How soon can you get that to the court? And also a copy to the defendant. Uh, I can get it to the court. Well, depending on how you want it, Judge, is there a way to send it electronically or does it need to be? Yeah, you can send it to the clerk's office electronically. Okay. Um, a... I presume I will be able to get it today, Your Honor. If not today, then certainly by Monday. All right. That has to be by 7-10-2023. Um, and then, ma'am, and please just answer my question specifically. Who has he paid the rent on the premises to yes. your understanding? Yes, he does. All right. Yeah, he's taking care of me like we're married. I mean, 
I will adjourn this out one week to the 14th, July 14th, 2023, 9 a.m. We'll proceed from there. All right, ma'am. You might want to see if you can get some representation or if you're going to vacate the premises um, that you do so um or that you bring something to the court indicating when a new unit might be available or otherwise that might factor into the court's decision all right thank you thank you right. linden park apartments versus james lewis good morning your honor andrew gertis for the plaintiff james lewis I see him there, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, very good. Okay, okay folks, so where are we on this case? Uh, Your Honor, I, I expected um, a representative from my client to be on this. Um, if if the court would allow, I, I wonder if you could put us into a meeting room, uh, Mr. Lewis and myself. We don't, we don't really do that. Oh, okay. Because what, what are you guys trying to do? Well, uh, I understood Mr. Lewis has run into some issues and uh, but that he desires to make payment. So I guess I'll ask him that and uh, see what he proposes. Okay. okay. Mr. Uh, Lewis. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, I, I just I went through a, a, a divorce of 42 years and I got divorced. And ever since then, I've been in a tailspin. I'm trying to get things back together. And if I could just get a couple of more months to get things back on track. I would definitely do that, and I'm striving to do that now. I uh, uh, okay, I mean, but I, hold it. The last hearing that you were here, you indicated you had two thousand to pay. Did you pay that to the landlord? No, I didn't, sir, Garner. Why not? Yeah, because I, well, I just lost my son last mm -hmm. Saturday, and uh, it's been so devastating for me. I I, I just can't understand it. He's thirty six year old. They found him in an alley, and that's totally not like him. And I'm really rocking and reeling over this. I, I'm, I, it, his viewing is Tuesday and his funeral is uh, Wednesday. And I'm, that caused me a big dilemma, a huge dilemma. And it's going to cause me a dilemma for a okay, long so, time. Okay, so hold on a second. Yes, Here's sir. what I'm going to do. I'm adjourning this matter out one week. You guys need to talk and figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to get this paid if it's going to be payment. The reps and and I, my condolences on your loss, but I don't know that plaintiff had been informed of that. And like I said, I, I what was represented to the court at the last hearing was that you had two thousand dollars to pay. So you might want to explain that. I'll give you an opportunity to explain that to the plaintiff. I'll set this okay. for July fourteenth, two thousand twenty-three, nine a.m. Guys, See if you guys can come to a resolution. Otherwise, I'll make the call. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. Court cost like case, Manchester Apartments versus Tracy Miller. Good morning, Your Honor. Alex Goldman appearing on behalf of the plaintiff. Tracy Miller. Yep, she's here. Miss Miller, you'll have to unmute. She just, she just dropped. All right, let me pass that one briefly. She just dropped off. Did she have another? Yes, she does. Oh, yeah. Manchester Apartments versus Kathleen Downs. Good morning, Your Honor. Alex Pilsman appearing on behalf of the plaintiff. Hi, this is Kathleen Downs. Um, I guess there was a man. Your claim is that there were management changes you paid to the previous company um, I, that was at the initial proceeding, then you were going to pay $200 by the 30th. Did that get paid? Yes, I paid that. And then everything else that you had asked me to do, I did as well. Okay, so where are we on this, folks? Uh, I do see the $200 was processed on July 3rd. There's still a substantial outstanding balance. I have a total of $7,147.40, um, inclusive of rent and court costs. 
Ms. Downs, your position, how much are you claiming you paid to the old company? Um, the It was 500 or 550 and last time we established that they got that back from the other company. The issue is, is that my rent was never changed during an unemployment phase. So the amount that they're claiming I owe is not correct. What's plaintiff's position on that? Your Honor, it, the rent is accurate with this management company. If the rent was never adjusted um, with the previous management, that's something that's out of our control. This is the numbers that I have based on um, the accounts from this current landlord. And when was the unemployment period that you're talking about? It was um, for a brief period in 2021 into 2022. I've been employed now for um, full time for about two months now. Um, so it was the, during the time that I had no that I did not have employment or unemployment, and the previous manager told me that um, she was going to adjust it. And then, like you've been told before, she's gone now. Um, I did speak to um, the SER program and my caseworker there, and the state is willing to help, but they want that judgment on what is actually owed to this apartment company. I know that when you're unemployed, your rent can go down to like $200 or something like that. So that's what I'm concerned about. Okay, so ma'am, SER would not cover this entire amount because you're at about $7,100. So if I took a six month period and just even credited you that amount. Let's say it's all correct that what you're saying and it should have gone down to say $200. How are you gonna pay the rest of this? The, the rent going forward or? Well, there's a $7,000 balance. Let, okay, just hypothetically. Okay. If I said 2,000 of that you don't know. Okay. Just picking a number. I mean, I'm not that I'm not ruling that so everybody's okay. clear. And then you have five thousand dollars. How are you gonna pay the five thousand? Um, hopefully the SER will help. SER is not gonna cover that much. Okay, well, look, hopefully something. Um, and then there's other organizations that I could go with my court judgment to seek out help. And then the next thing would be making payment arrangements. Ma'am, what are, <laughs> I don't know why these organizations need a judgment. And quite frankly, for the SER, they don't need a judgment either. Yeah, I, I spoke with my caseworker yesterday and she specifically told me a list of things that she needed in, in the court judgment for the amount that's owed she needs so she knows what, what she's going to approve me for. So you want me to issue a judgment? I can issue a judgment. I can issue a judgment for what plaintiff's claiming. But, but that's inaccurate. Ma'am, how much do you think you owe? I think that I probably, at most, owe $2,500 because my rent would have gone significantly down for six to eight months. How and much then, is your rent? It, it was, at the time when I was unemployed, it was $711. Okay, then, but ma'am, 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 that's precisely my point. If I even said it was eight months, you're saying that it was 700. And let's say that that means that there's a $500 difference, right? So if I take, if I just gave you credit, and I, I'm not saying that I am ultimately. So if I take 4,000 off of the amount that's owed, where is the 3,000 going to come from in 10 days? In 10 days? Um... That's what you get on a judgment. Um, Ma'am, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, I want a judgment. This amount's not correct. 
And then I can't get help without the judge. You can't have it both ways. Okay. Um, then what can I do? Have you talked to your landlord? Um, just not, not, um, not in depth about this situation now. Um, do you recommend me trying to come to um, some kind of agreement with them? Well, ma'am, you got to give it a shot because they're going to be entitled to judgment. And even if, and that the problem is, and I am not going to do it because I don't know that that's right. But even if I took the $500 that you're saying they put on your account and shouldn't have. So even if I believed your whole story, the 3000 that you'd have to come up with, you're not going to be able to do that in 10 days. SER is not going to cover that amount. And SER, by the way, isn't even if they give you something, they're not going to pay until you pay the rest of it. I also have the appointment with Hawk on July 31st. All right. You're going to have to call Hawk and see if they can move it up. But I'll, because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjourn this out one week. You're going to need to get to your landlord. You're going to have to work something now. Um, or whatever to try to get this resolved. Because okay. if the landlord says they're not going to make payments, they're not going to, I don't know where you're going to come up with these funds. Even if I give them a partial judgment. Okay. Um, like if I, if we, if it was the $2,000 balance, I could work with that over the next couple of months. Ma'am, you're going to need to talk to the landlord. Okay. Because okay. I, They've got a $7,000 balance. You're claiming that it's something else. And I've been doing this long enough to realize that unless you can work something out with them, this thing is, this, this is going to be, it's going to be what it is. But I mean, I'll give you a chance to talk with them, see what you can work out. 714, 9 a.m. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Manchester Apartments versus Amanda Crawford. Hello, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Ms. Crawford, you were to deposit. Well, I, I, okay. Well, looks like part of what I said was done. Um, yeah, Council, how I, much, how much is owing on the account now? I have $4,243.40 in total. That's inclusive of rent, late fees, and court costs. Thank you. Um, last time we were here, uh, Ms. Crawford, you were supposed to put $2,000 into court escrow. Yes. I have $1,000. Yes. Half of that money belong to my mother uh we were both gonna put the money in but the last time we were at court the lawyer had informed us that her application was not approved so she's gonna have to move and in the interests of her own self i guess she she won't give me the money <laughs> so i put my thousand in um with that being said um I don't know that there's much else we can do at this point, just because if, if her application isn't approved, it's not approved. You know, there's nothing, there's no like finagling that. Um, I mean, I, I guess the only other point is that, you know, I don't know how they're holding me to a contract that I never even signed. So <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the only thing because obviously she's going to have to move out of the apartment. Um, at least that's the conclusion we've come to. Uh, with that being said, um, you know, I never even signed the lease in March, so I don't even know what's in it. I'm not sure where these calculations came from. 
these are supposed to be income-based apartments. When I called the manager, she said that only 17 apartments get income assistance and the others are like base rent is what she called it. And I was under the understanding that I was getting the assistance, but she said I was not. So I guess 711 is the lowest the rent could go, even though I'm unemployed. Um, so I guess that well, kind of just leaves it where it's at. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm going to do. I listen to that. I'm going to find that there's no tribal issue for the court after hearing on this matter. I'm going to issue a judgment to the plaintiff for possession. Total redemption amount is $4,243.40. Um, and so I will issue that judgment. However, you need to see if you can work something out with the landlord or at least get some of, of your affairs in order. The writ won't issue until the 24th. So I'm going to give additional time. But uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's how we'll do it. And then I'm going to indicate the escrows to be released to plaintiff. That's okay. So that brings it down to like 3000. Yes, and... ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Recall. Court recalls the case of Manchester apartments versus Tracy Miller. You'll need to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there yeah. you are. State uh -huh. your name, please. Tracy Miller. Okay, last time we were here, um, there's about 3,500 owed, I think, and or something along those lines. You were going to pay 1,000 to the landlord. Did that get paid? Yes, um, it did. Um, I got, I sent it off yesterday, next day mail. So counsel, you don't have the thousand on your. No, your honor. <laughs> I kind of figured that. What uh, do you I mean? have, I have. Mayor, I Ms. Have... Miller, what do you mean you sent it off? Um, I have been sick, your honor. And, um, I got the money yesterday. I couldn't, I, I told you I stay in Detroit, so I didn't have a ride to take it out there. So I went to the post office, got a post office money order, and I uh, had airmail. I have okay, a copy of my receipt and the tracking. Ma'am, ma'am. Yes. Yes. It was supposed to be paid by the 29th. I understand your honor. I know, I told, but I was sick okay. and I didn't have the mo all the money at the time. Council, how much is owing? I have a total of three thousand nine hundred and eighty-one dollars and forty cents, inclusive of rent, late fees, and court costs. Okay, I don't think that's accurate because um, my rent was supposed to be four sixty-eight a month, so I'm into how many months am I behind? How many months are you saying I'm behind? I have rent of 463. Um, I have a previous balance from the previous uh, landlord of 1914. And then I have unpaid rent for April, May, June, and July of 463. So what do you mean the $1,900? Now, what, what was that about? That's a previous balance um, from the ledger of the previous landlord that remains unpaid. Uh, I think that's incorrect, but we can go for that. I gave the thousand dollars, so you can um, let me know. The judge can decide what he did, but I do have the um, money order receipt and everything. I can send it to you in the text. That's my pro. Council, what was the total amount you gave me before? The total amount is $3,981.40. That's $3,766 in rent, $30 in late fees, and court costs of $185.40. Court's going to grant a judgment to the plaintiff. That's 
finding no tribal issue after hearing. Um, the judgment amount will be the 3981.40. Any credits that come in afterwards, of course, would be applied against that judgment. A writ would not issue until the 24th. So I'll give her extra oh. time, but you're going to have to get oh. this resolved, man. Uh, okay. Um, Judge, I did take your advice and I did um, apply for the uh, SER program. So, you know, I have to wait. Well, ma'am, as I explained, Ma'am, as I explained to um, the previous tenant here, you can apply to SER. SER is not going to cover that entire balance. It, well, it's unlikely. And then the other thing is, is that they're not going to pay their amount until the other amounts are paid. Okay. I so understand. you can coordinate that, ma'am. You can coordinate that however you want to coordinate it. Mm -hmm. What my problem here is, is that to try to give you an opportunity to work this out last time, we agreed that what you were going to do is you were going to pay a thousand to the landlord by the 29th. You didn't do that. Had you done it, basically, then maybe something else could have been done on this because that would have been at least two, I think two months rent thereabout. And so something would have been done on it. Right okay. now, as we sit here, hold on. Right now, as we sit here today, they're at well, they're 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 not even at the number they were at the last time. It has just gone up because nothing's been paid. No, so what I'm I would done. Like I can't. I can't do anything yeah, else I except try to give you more time to rent. work it out. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maple, Maple Heights. Is that everything for council? She's got this last one. This last, okay. Maple Heights versus Nicolette Burnham. Good morning, Your Honor. Alex Pullman on behalf of the plaintiff. Um, we received the resident signed RD pay mat agreement and it was accepted, so I'll be sending in a dismissal for this one. Okay, fantastic. Case is dismissed. That's without prejudice. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Take care. You too. Rose Community Management versus Shirley Ramsey. Thank you, Your Honor. This is Snyder Potter on behalf of Mark Wasbury. We represent the plaintiff in this matter. Okay, we turned on our closed caption. Ms. Ramsey, can you hear us? I need you to unmute the computer. Okay, hold on, Ms. Ramsey. We're going to send somebody in. Can we get somebody in there? Oh. Send a message to. There's this one. Did he give you documents? No, he gave me two separate van of search warrants. The documentation he had to talk to you about, he took away the given up. Got it. Okay. Is he coming back? I told him I could let him know what we had a break. Okay, oh, great. And he said okay. Yes. Okay. Ms. Rams, bless your heart. Um, She's seen my message, so she should be going back. Okay, somebody's headed in momentarily, Ms. Ramsey. Well, we're hoping today. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, could you? All right, let me, Council, let me pass this one real quick because we're going to go down there. I, I don't know what's going on, but we've got to get her unmuted so I can at least hear from her. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Court does call the case of Valley Ranch Apartments versus Desiree Heron. Can you type to her that we're passing it? But we'll... yeah. Good morning, Your Honor. Mark Lando on behalf of the plaintiff. Good morning, Your Honor. James Gergi on behalf of the defendant. And what are we doing in this case, General? 
Um, Your Honor, I haven't had a moment to communicate with Mr. Orlando yet, but my understanding is that this account was paid off as of 527 and that she had a positive account balance, which I think this case should be set, uh, her eviction should be set aside because the account was paid off and she was made to believe that the count, the court date would be, the, the case would be settled because she came up to bounds. So, so your understanding is that the account zeroed out on the 29th or, or zeroed out during the month of June. That's correct. And then Mr. Mr. Landau? I'll, I'll help clarify to the court. Uh, counsel actually said uh, that it was paid in May, and that is correct. Okay. Um, the tenant did make a substantial payment on May 25. And at that moment in time, the tenant did have um, a slight credit heading into the month of June. Um, but under the court rules, under the statute, the summary proceeding statute, um, whatever the amount owes, owed is at the time of the hearing when the judgment is entered is what goes into the judgment. And at the time that the case was heard, which was on June 5, the defendant had not paid the June rent, so the dollar amount that was owed as of that date was the sixteen twenty six seventy four. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold it. If I go back to May, when did her May balance get paid? It was paid on May twenty five, Your Honor. Well, if her May balance was paid on May twenty five, the defendant's right. There should have been no judgment. Because we have the court hearing on May 26th. It got it adjourned to June 2nd. It should have never been adjourned. She had paid. There was a hearing on May 25th. On 26. May 26. June, I adjourned it on May 26th to June 2nd, but that case should have never been adjourned because it's, it, that was paid. That would be under the court rule. Well, that's, uh, that is correct. I don't have the entire file to verify, but I'm trusting that the court is uh, accurate. I am and looking at, if you want to trust it, we'll send it to you. There was a hearing on, on this. I got my handwriting right there. I got my date stamp right there. On May 26, there was a hearing. I adjourned it to June 2nd. You just indicated she paid it before that hearing. That June 2nd date should have never happened. Which then consequently, on that June 2nd date, a judgment's issue for June rent, but you guys needed to start over. This judgment's vacant. I, I, I don't need any further response. I'm not going to go back and forth. The, this judgment is vacated. This case is dismissed with prejudice as to those figures. Judge, just uh, to make sure that the with prejudice is uh, with respect to rent through May, it does not factor into the rent. This case owners. should have never gone into June. So the rent she paid through May. Right. This case okay. should have stopped at that moment. I, I get that. I just wanted to make sure it was clear on the record when your honor says with prejudice. Oh, oh. I made myself clear. And Mr. Landu, I'm... I believe that uh, June rent is sitting in escrow with the court has been deposited. Like, let me see the file. And oh, she paid June escrow June rent. rent she shouldn't even, they shouldn't even be here. Yeah, it's sitting, the 1780, which is actually that amount. With the late fee. Yeah. Counsel for the defendant, what do you want me to do with escrow? Because quite frankly, it should have been returned to her. She should have never had to pay the escrow or we can pay it over to the landlord and just call it a day. Either way, um, your call, whatever you want me to do. Just, I would uh, send it back to the defendant. 
escrow to be released to defend it. Okay, coming back to her. Thank you. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Have a wonderful day. Court calls case uh, Valley Ranch versus. All right, please raise your right hand. Sound these for the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. All right, you may proceed on the warrant. The White House Police Department received not, several anonymous tips that Thomas Zemple is involved in the sales of narcotics. Information uh, is that Zemple lives at 361 Middle, apartment 14 in the city of White House. Link check and surveillance confirmed that Mr. Zemple does live at 361 Middle. A check of the in-house computer shows five different drug raid arrests for Mr. Um, Zemple since March of 2017 um, between Trenton Police Department and MSP Drano. Um, Criminal history of Mr. Zemple shows three felony drug convictions, and there's two felony uh, drug cases that are currently in Wake uh, County Third Circuit. On July 3rd, 2023, Officer Eight Grove was patrolling the area at 361 Middle and he observed a vehicle exit car wash directly um, across the street from 361. Officer Grove made a traffic stop on the vehicle and arrested the passenger for possession of methamphetamine and fentanyl. Both the driver and the passenger of the vehicle stated that the uh, meth was bought purchased from Mr. Zemple. I was contacted by CI number 135, who stated he or she could buy methamphetamine from Zempel. I made arrangements for Zempel to get picked up and when he was brought to the police station. Um, once at the White House police station, uh, CI 135 was brought to the tech bureau where he was searched and made sure he had no narcotics, paraphernalia, or money located on his person. Nothing was found on his person. Um, this should be noted this happened uh, Wednesday night, July 5th, approximately um, 10 o'clock p.m. I introduced the CI to Officer Judge, who was working in an undercover capacity, and they were given um, $100 in pre recorded wind up police funds. Um, the CI and the UC officer arrived at the parking lot of 360, or they contacted uh, Mr. Zemple and arranged for a purchase of $100 of methamphetamine. UC officer drove to the parking lot with the CI, um, they parked on the south side, and Mr. Zemple exited the apartment building. Uh, came to the vehicle, spoke with both the CI and undercover officer. The undercover officer recognized uh, Mr. Zempel from prior contacts. Um, Zempel and CI uh, entered the apartment building. They entered apartment number 14. I was able to enter the building through the unlocked side door, uh, walk to the basement where apartment 14 is located, and I could hear um, the CI and Mr. Zempel talking inside the apartment. After approximately 10 minutes, the CI exited the building, returned to the car, and provide the UC officer with the folded up uh, receipt that contained a crystallized substance that was later tested positive to be methamphetamine. Um, back at the police station, the CI was searched again and no drugs, uh, contraband, or money was located on him. I prepared a search warrant for 361 Biddle Apartment 14. The search warrant was uh, reviewed by APR Omar Cesare and signed by 27th District Court Magistrate Pass, uh, Pat Master Giacomo. On Thursday, July 6, 2023, a briefing was held at the Wyandotte Police Station for the search warrant to be executed at 361 Biddle, Department 14. Several officers were present um, during the uh, briefing, and at 2105 hours, officers executed the uh, search warrant. You uh, had to force entry. We knocked some officers our presence at 14. Um, we forced entry. As we entered the apartment, they encountered two people, a female and Mr. Zemple. As officers uh, Strombarger, Aki, uh, Adam Grote, and Tyler Grote entered the bedroom, Zempel appeared to be smoking some types of narcotics, blew the smoke in the direction of Officer Stromberg, uh, refused to get on the ground, he had to be forced to the ground while he was holding a knife in his hand. Um, Mr. Zempel was taken into custody in the bedroom uh, where Mr. Zempel was located on the table and on the floor. Officers located a total of 18.74 grams of field tested positive methamphetamine and a total of 2.43 grams of cocaine, a digital scale of right residue on it, two cell phones, numerous crack pipes and meth pipes, um, and a wallet belonging to Mr. Zuffo that had his Michigan driver's license in it. Um, in the kitchen, officers recovered numerous used uh, crack and meth pipes, two digital scales with right residue on it, and a residency belonging to Mr. Um, Zuffo. And it should be noted that Mr. Zuffo has a lengthy criminal history. Um, Dating back to uh, again, like I said, 2017 through March of 20, uh, 23, um, with all drug convictions in Wake County. 
Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Upon examination of pending witness, that finding the offense charge were committed, and that there's probable cause and the defendant commit those offenses. Okay. You want to do the other one after? Okay. Or do you want to do it now? Uh, we can square on this while we wait for the decision. Okay. You just have to text Joe and tell us. Okay. All right. We are still on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Javion Cunningham. Two, three, one, six, eight, four. And your name again for the record. You check for Sergeant Ken Grove. All right. You're still under oath and you may proceed on the warrant. On Saturday, June 24, 2023, approximately 19.15 hours, why not officers judge? Detective Haskin were driving a semi-marked semi -marked police car 76, and Deputy Chief Hamilton and myself were driving a semi-marked semi wind-out police car 718, and we were working the Fort Street Dream Cruise. <clears throat> officers were driving back from a previous call and were in the area of Fort Southfield, the city of Lincoln Park, when we saw a mail letter identified as Cunningham driving a white and blue uh, dirt plane. Southbound on 4th Street. Mr. Cunningham was driving in a reckless manner, doing wheelies, standing on the seat, um, and continually driving excessive speed, and he was not wearing a helmet. He was just had sunglasses on. As the dirt bike reached Southbound 4th Street crossing Goddard, officers saw that the bike did not have a license plate and attempted to stop the uh, bike with emergency lights activated. The driver, later identified as Mr. Cunningham, pulled to the right, cutting off several southbound vehicles and entered a bar parking lot. Officers all all officers activated activated their emergency lights and siren in an attempt to stop Cunningham. Cunningham sped through the lot and onto northbound Drew they are towards Goddard. Officers got stuck in traffic and were able to, uh, when we got to Goddard, we lost sight of him for a few seconds. As officers approached Fort Street, officers saw that Cunningham was now northbound on Fort from Boeing. As officer judge and Haskins approached the intersection, Cunningham turned the bike directly at the officers, nearly striking in front of their vehicle, and then fled westbound on Goddard. As the, uh, Deputy Chief Hamilton and I got to the intersection, we attempted to stop Cunningham, but he was able to drive around our vehicle and flee westbound on Goddard. As Cunningham passed our police vehicle, DC Hamilton saw the end of a handgun sticking out on the right side of Cunningham's pants and waistband. Cunningham reached speeds over 75 miles an hour and 25 mile an hour zone, failing to stop for all traffic control devices while driving westbound on Goddard. Cunningham turned northbound on Dix and made, then made a U-turn, went back southbound on Dix, doing a wheelie through the intersection of Dix and Goddard's heading southbound, reaching speeds over 75 miles an hour. At Dix and Wesley, Cunningham drove onto the sidewalk, turned around and drove right back towards officers, uh, nearly striking the front of our police cars, then fled northbound on Dix at a high rate of speed. Um, Cunningham reached speeds over 70 miles an hour or 75 miles an hour in a 40 mile hour zone, disregarding all traffic control devices. Uh, once Cunningham entered Northbound 75, the chase was terminated. The White Police Department took images from the in-car camera of the driver on the dirt bike and placed them on the department Facebook page, asking for assistance to identify him. The department re received numerous tips that the driver of the dirt bike is Mr. Cunningham. Detroit Police Officer Stephen Costa called and stated that he went to high school with Cunningham and he was positive him uh, that was driving the dirt bike. Officer Costa provided us with Cunningham's Facebook page. Um, and a picture of Cunningham and his girlfriend, later identified as Kayla Holder. Um, in the picture, um, several pictures on that Facebook showed Mr. Cunningham with a gun. Um, we took several screenshots from Mr. Cunningham's Facebook page. Um, we were identified the lower, uh, he has a lower left sleeve tattoo that we observed during the chase. Also the same, appeared to be the same type of chain. Um, within about 30 minutes of us on his Facebook page, the Facebook page was terminated. Um, Um, on Tuesday, June 27th, we conducted surveillance at 14 Apple Grove in the city of Ecorse. Uh, we did see a car that belonged to Mr. Cunningham registered, Mr. Cunningham parked outside the house. As officers were approaching the house, uh, Ms. Holder exited the house, saw officers, ran back in the house, refused to come out for approximately 10 minutes. She came out, uh, refused to let us access to the house. Mr. Cunningham uh, refused to come out, um, and at that time we left. Um, and I was contacted by an attorney who said Mr. Cunningham would turn himself into us, but he has yet to show up. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Upon examination of opinion witness, I find the offense charge were committed. That there's probable cause that the defendant committed the offense. Would you like this returned? Yes, please. All right, the court's going to also indicate that that will be a $35,000 10% bond. 
Thank you. Your name, ma'am? Kimberly Stanley. Okay. Well, uh, Council, this might be a little bit unusual, but your client will be present um, because yes, he's in the Wyandotte Jail. He's in the Wyandotte Jail, oh. so he will be available on Zoom, and then I can uh, we can proceed from there. Okay. It's kind of a first for me. Uh, for a tenant matter, having a tenant in our jail, but okay. in any event, we'll handle that accordingly. Okay. 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 But I have a couple other matters to handle, so I'm just going to have you both um, on mute for a few moments. All right. Okay. So, Mr. Serrano, are you ready to proceed? Ready on all matters, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, and um, this is Mr. Zuppel, correct? That's correct. Right. Okay, we are going on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Thomas Michael Zuppel, 231698. <clears throat> and appearance counsel? Your Honor, good afternoon. Richard T. Serrano, P33828. I appear as MITC counsel for Raymond purposes only on behalf of with my client uh, who appears uh, in custody via Zoom. We have no objection. And please state your name, sir. Oh, oh, Your Honor, we require formal reading on those all charges, please. Please state your name, okay, sir. Mr. Thomas Michael Zemple. Okay, the complaint alleges on July 6th of this year in the city of Wyandotte, it alleges that there, you have one, there's, this is three count complaint, sir. Count one, controlled substance delivery manufacturer of methamphetamine. It's alleged on the date I just indicated in the city of Wyandotte that you did deliver and or possess with intent to deliver <clears throat> the controlled substance methamphetamine contrary to MCL 333.74012BI. This is a felony charge. Maximum penalty upon conviction, not more than 20 years in state prison and or a $25,000 fine. Count two, controlled substance possession of methamphetamine or ecstasy. The complaint alleges on the same date and location that you did knowingly or intentionally possess methamphetamine, contrary to MCL 73, I'm sorry, MCL 333.74032BI. This is a felony charge, maximum penalty upon conviction, not more than 10 years in state prison and or a $15,000 fine. <clears throat> Count three, controlled substance possession, cocaine, heroin, or another narcotic, less than 25 grams. The complaint alleged on the same date and location he did knowingly or intentionally possess less than 25 grams of a mixture containing the controlled substance cocaine, contrary to MCL 333.74032AB. It's a felony charge. The maximum penalty of my conviction is not more than four years in state prison and or a $25,000 fine. Habitual offender third offense notice. Take notice the defendant was twice previously convicted by felony or an attempt to commit a felony that on or about December 7, 2015, he is convicted of the offense of operating lab involving meth. In violation of MCL 333.7401C2F in the Third Circuit Court, Wayne County. And that on or about August 24th, 2017, he was convicted of the offense of operating a lab <clears throat> involving meth. In violation of MCL 7401C2F in the Third Circuit Court. Therefore, defendant subject to the penalties provided by MCL 769.11. That penalty, penalty would be twice the maximum sentence on a primary offense or lesser term. Maximum penalty cannot be less than the maximum term for a first conviction. Do you understand what you're charged with, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Mm. Sir, you have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint one to represent you. In fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes. The court assigned the order for court appointed attorney for felony purposes. 
<clears throat> you have the right to be presumed innocent to prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes. The court's going to enter plea of not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for a probable cause conference on July 14th at 9 a.m. at the 28th District Court. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Can I can I speak? I have a job. Uh, I work at a Riverview, and and I use my boss's truck to come home so that I could go back to work. No drugs were ever in that or ever. Hold on, sir. No. Hold on. Stop. 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 Just a moment. Your attorney's going to address that. Okay, well, and so, counsel, his truck. sir, sir, stop okay. talking for a few moments. You have an attorney that's going to do some speaking for you. Okay, so thank you. It'll be, it'll be just a little bit before you can um, tell me what you want to tell me. Okay. Okay. And so, counsel, as to bond. Your Honor, my client does affirm that he has uh, one case pending in Wayne County on a felony matter. Uh, nature of the same uh, charges as these. He's told me that he has private counsel for that case, but he's maybe seeking court appointed counsel for this case. So he started to tell you he is working. Uh, Your Honor, he's a resident of the area. Uh, I, he's single, he sports no children. Uh, he says he's never missed a court date before. That's about all I can say in his favor, Your Honor, because the court uh, well knows that He's had cases like this. Uh, thank you. I have a GPS tether. He does have a tether, yes. Which doesn't seem to be doing much good at this point, but in any event, uh, except the Sergeant Crow. Uh, your name for the record, please. Your Honor, Detective Sergeant Kendra. Your Honor, Mr. Zeppel is currently on a tether for Wayne County. It is our understanding, speaking the Trenton Police Department that's in charge of the investigation, that uh, Mr. Zeppel took a plea deal and was to be sentenced to four, 20 years in prison starting June 30th, but you know, making meth and selling meth and using meth, um, we feel that he's a dangerous society. We'll ask for a million cash. Okay, so I, I just have a couple of questions. So there seems, so the case that Mr. Zempel is being sentenced to four to 20 years in state prison, <clears throat> It appears as though so all of these all of those cases are out of Trenton. Yes, ma'am. And, and so, am I looking at this correctly? Where one of these cases originated December eighteenth of twenty twenty one, and then another one September twenty fifth of twenty twenty two. Yes, ma'am. And so then these were all combined together. I believe there's one, uh, I believe they were all combined together. That's how we came up with the deal. One is a over 50 case also. And then there's another one from March 5th of this year. Is that included in that resolution? I'm not sure. Do you, Mr. Zempel, is that one also included in that resolution? I'm not sure. I know which one. <laughs> Was it the one where there were, uh, they found crumbs? There was like, it was the charge of possession, but there wasn't even enough to test. I think it was pretzel salt they were claiming was meth. I don't know. They tasted it and it tasted like meth, I guess. I don't know. I'm not even sure. I don't know, sir. Sir, listen, listen. You have multiple cases from the same jurisdiction. And yeah. so clearly you can't keep those straight either. But what that tells me is that you've been out on bond 
on all of those matters and still violating bond, but yet you're still out on bond and not in custody. Okay. I'm a and drug now, addict. And now, oh, sir, it seems to be you're more than a drug addict according to what you've pled guilty to and your previous convictions. It was either that or I could get a lot more time. What? Or so I took the four to twenty versus the ten to life. Well, in two thousand nineteen, you pled guilty. If I missed that uh, when they charged you as the third offense, as opposed to the fourth offense, uh, however. Either way, I'm going to die in prison. Well, either way, sir, prison has not um, did shit. helped you not I need, I need rehab. I need. I don't need prison. I need a rehab. And they never uh, give me sir, rehab. I, sir, I think at this point, um, given the charges that you've been operating in my lab, you have two of those convictions. And that your convictions that you just pled guilty on were possession, delivery manufacturer, which was wrong, delivery manufacturer, <clears throat> delivery manufacturer, possession. Possession. I think you're pretty well beyond the rehab at this point. But in any event, um, the court will note that given your criminal history, the plea deal that you just took, that's the same type of case that you are charged with now, you're scheduled for sentencing in a couple of weeks to be sentenced to four to 20 years in prison. And while you're awaiting sentencing on that, it's alleged that you've committed the exact same type of offense. Not to mention, your criminal history would suggest that while you're out on bond, you're still violating the law multiple times over with the same offense that you are out on bond for. So for those purposes, the court's going to remand you without bond. And so you can be sentenced while you're while you're in custody. Thank you think you could give my boss a truck back that they will never use for anything to do with drugs? Was the detective sorry, was the vehicle forfeited? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well then your your boss is going to have to step, go through the process, sir. We spoke. That's bullshit. It was parked on the street. I only used it to drive. I'm home. sorry. What? I'm sorry. What is it you just said, sir? I said I only use the truck to drive home, and that's it. No, I, I didn't have no, 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 no. Before that, before that. I don't know. Okay, well, as the court indicated, you are being remanded without bond, based upon your Thank criminal history, the fact that you're awaiting sentencing on the same type of charges that you have. I believe four or five um, different cases <clears throat> that arose from that same, from the same jurisdiction of the 33rd District Court. For some reason, the Third Circuit Court did not find it necessary to remand you while you're awaiting sentencing. And then here you are yet again. <clears throat> you have two previous convictions as well for the same for operating a meth lab. So for those reasons, the court's remanding you without bond. Thank you, Thank you. And the detectives are in touch with your boss, sir. All right, thank you. We're going to be off the record. I won't be talking to my boss. I just went further.